Well, good day, Dean Boerter from Innes Image Ministries in Durban. Another pleasant winter day. I've been spending a bit of time meditating on the interaction that takes place between Martha and Jesus when he's on his way um, to the death of Lazarus. And of course, the, that moment he stands before the tomb is a, it's a massive moment, you know. Lazarus come forth and the dead Lazarus come forth after being stinking in the grave for four days. But this interaction between Martha and Jesus is, I believe, a moment of revelation similar to the moment when Jesus asked the disciples, who do the people say I am? And of course, Peter responds that he's the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, my Father has revealed that to you. You didn't figure it out on your own. So if we pick up in uh, John 11, verse 20. And when Martha heard that Jesus was approaching the village, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Now we know in the original passages where Martha and Mary were involved. Mary was the one who chose to sit at Jesus' feet rather than to do the, the practical serving and Martha complained to Jesus about her sisters um, sitting at his feet and not helping her. And Jesus had rebuked her and said, you worry about many things that are not important. And so it's now interesting, Mary stays at home and one can throw interpretations on that. Um, I think a positive spin is the right one. Uh, but it's Martha now who comes out to meet Jesus. Um, and Martha said to Jesus, my Lord, if only you had come sooner. And, and, and I think that's the refrain of, of many Christians and many people that um, we feel the hour is so late and, and uh, in terms of our estimation, you know, there's no remedy for what's taken place. And uh, so she says to Jesus, if you'd, if you'd come sooner, my brother would not have died. Um, and... She, she goes on to indicate her state of mind, her frame of reference by saying, I know that if you were to ask God for anything, in other words, she's hoping for a resurrection, he would do it for you. And isn't this how many of us still think that some men have favor with God more than us? So she's showing the way she thinks to Jesus. She's going, you know, you've got favor with God. I've seen God favor you. I've seen him answer your prayers. And so there's a culture in Christianity also, of, you know, send me your prayer requests. I'll pray for you. Like as if there's a, a, a stronger anointing on certain men. And of course, that's just absolute comf. It's a religious mindset that we must debase and throw away. Um God hears every prayer of every child of his. And so the conversation continues and Jesus says, your brother will rise and live. And again, Martha interprets it through her lenses that, of course, there's a resurrection day to come. You know, that's what we are taught. So she goes, yes, I know you'll rise with everybody on the resurrection day. So Martha's rationalizing what Jesus is telling her. And she's falling back on her experience and her understanding of the scripture, her theology. Um, she isn't dealing with the reality of who was standing in front of her. And so Jesus has to make it very clear. Martha, you don't have to wait until then. And here's the most powerful statement. Jesus says, I am. The 
resurrection and I am the life. The I am is the same God who spoke to Moses in his burning bush experience. And so, like Moses, like Peter, Martha is standing in front of the living God. And she's being told who he is. He's saying to her, I am. You don't have to wait until some resurrection day. Everyone who believes on me, he will live. So Christ in himself is the day of resurrection. And anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. This is what the I am tells him. And the one who lives by believing, by believing, by believing in me, will never die. Do you believe this? And we should have that question in our mind. Do I believe this? Do I believe that that's the I am? The Messiah was the I am? The same God who sent Moses to deliver his people? Same God? And Martha finally gets it. She has her moment. She has that aha moment. And she goes, yes, Lord, I do. I've always believed that you are the anointed one, the son of God who came into this world to save us. It's, it's a powerful moment in her heart where she suddenly recognizes, I'm talking to the living God. I'm in his presence right this, at this moment. And Every one of us has to reach that moment where God is suddenly real and we suddenly know that we're not dealing with just words and we're not just dealing with, with theologies and we're not dealing with our frame of reference that's been given to us. So many frames of reference we have, raptures and this thing and that thing, and, and yet... We need this moment of clarity that Jesus Christ is all of it. It's not about a day in the future. It's about the day today. Do you recognize in the present moment that he is the resurrection? He is the life. He is the door. He is the gate. He is the bread of life. He's the living word that if we eat of it, we do not die. And in closing, he reminds us, he says, I give life to whoever I choose. Choose life.